Hey guys, David at Our Week in Homestead. It's that time of the year where Lisa and I are starting to plan out our spring garden. Last year was pretty good, but this year we want to increase our harvest and make sure that we take full advantage of our limited gardening space. Last year we noticed that we didn't have any bees pollinating our garden. We keep bees at our ranch property and we thought about bringing a hive up here to our suburban home. After thinking about it a little bit further, most of the time it would be okay, but if we had to do any heavy maintenance in the hive, we could have thousands of agitated bees flying into our neighbor's yards and that wouldn't be a good idea. So we started looking for alternatives to find ways to pollinate our backyard garden and that's when we came across mason bees. In this video, we want to talk about the benefits of getting mason bees in your backyard as well as the process it takes to getting them installed in your backyard. After doing some research on the internet, we chose the Chalet Bee House Kit from Crown Bees. I'll put a link to their website in the description. This kit comes with everything you need for both springtime mason bees and summertime leafcutter bees. Now it's time to mount our bee house. Find a wall that is south or southeast facing. You want to have good morning sun, but you don't want it to get blistering warm in the afternoon. Be sure to mount the house at least five feet off the ground to keep it away from predators. It's a good idea that if you're going to put a hole in the exterior of your home, that before putting the screw in, you put a little of construction adhesive back into the hole to ensure that there's no long-term leaks. After the screw has been attached, go ahead and hang the bee house onto the screw and you're ready to put your nesting material into the bee house. Now we're going to install the grass reeds. On a grass reed, one end is closed, one end is open. You need to make sure to put the closed end towards the back. My kit came with two different size reeds. The smaller reeds are for the leaf cutter bees and the bigger ones are for the mason bees. I decided to put the smaller ones on the bottom because they're the ones that are going to be in there the longest throughout the year. We also bought two accessories that didn't come with the bee house. One was a hatchery that allows you to put your cocoons up here and out of the way so bugs and weather doesn't get to them until they hatch. The other thing we got was a bird guard we have a family of nesting hummingbirds near the garden, so I figured the bird guard would help give the bees some protection. After the reeds are installed, take some random sticks and place it in the voids in between the reeds. This will help give the bees some visual clues and will help them find their nests. Mason bees and leafcutter bees are also known as solitary bees. Solitary bees have a 95% efficiency rate in pollination. What that means is for every 100 plants that they visit, they pollinate 95%. Honeybees, on the other hand, have a 5% pollination rate. One of the big differences is, is that in a solitary bee house, you have about 200 bees or so, whereas with a honeybee colony, you could have as many as 10,000. The solitary bees usually confine their flying space and where they pollinate to within about 300 feet of where their home is, whereas honeybees have about a two mile radius. Mason bees use clay in order to encapsulate their nests. The kit came with a bag of clay. The instructions call for taking a half a cup of water and kneading it until you get the clay nice and moist. Then you place the clay in your garden around 25 feet from the bee house. We decided to put our mud in a plastic container so we could take it in and out of the garden while we were doing yard maintenance. So now it's time to get these bees in their new home. Our kit came with a product called Invita Bee. They make two different formulas, one formula for mason bees and one formula for leaf cutter bees. You take the product and you spritz it on their grass reeds and this is supposed to kind of coax them to want to go in there and create a nest. 
After that's in, we go ahead and take the box that the bees come in, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the hatchery that I purchased. And there's a lot of awoken bees in there. I'm gonna push the hatchery back in and give them some time to kind of adjust and get used to the smell of the invited bee. And then as they come out, they'll hopefully be coaxed to go into the grass reeds and start making nests. I also thought I'd share an experience that some of the bees had on their way to our home. Uh, their package got lost in the mail for about six days. So a lot of them had a chance to to get out and when we received our packages we were pulling it out three of the bees came out so we put them inside of the incubator that was provided in our kit and put them in the fridge to kind of calm them down i think my plan here is to just open them and set them inside here and hopefully they can kind of smell and get used to that smell of the invited bee and kind of coax them to come out and find their home here too so they're starting to come out and kind of get acclimated to their new surroundings. We'll let them be for the night and we'll see how they look in the morning. So it's been a couple days since we released the mason bees. When the weather gets over 75 degrees, you know, on average per day, we're gonna go ahead and put 200 leaf cutter bees and release them. Then this bee house is really gonna be full of bees and we're gonna start seeing them in our gardens. We'll do a video when that time comes and we'll show you guys the effects that it's had on our garden as well as what the bee house looks like after they've had a chance to make it their own home. If you don't want to miss any of our upcoming videos, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. I'll also put a link to the Crown Bee Bee House that we purchased in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. As we're building the channel, we could use the encouragement and help keep us moving forward. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment down below and we'll do the best to answer them. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.